So welcome to Kiss Off. This is Ty Warner. I want to talk to you about the contact analysis options we have within KISSOFT. Specifically today we want to talk about um, we enter a gear pair uh, we, and then why we would take that gear pair and link the KISSOFT gear pair here that we design into the shaft module for the pinion and also for the gear. And the reason is because then we can use in our KISSOFT cylindrical gear pair, we can use that def shaft deflection uh, from the gearing uh, or from the uh, the shaft modules in our contact analysis for transmission error. So first off we have some information on our gear pair and we enter that gear pair and in this case just so you know I'm just going to go with the 23 tooth, 37 tooth uh, pinion and gear, 1850 RPM, 200 foot-pounds, maybe you can see a little better, 200 foot-pounds, um, we're going to use a module B3 and a helix angle of 20 right hand, okay? Gear materials, I'm not going to change those around too much, and we're going to size the profile shift for optimal specific sliding, we're going to use the standard reference profiles A, it will be oil bath, we're going to use ISO 6336 method B, and we're not going to put any modifications initially on the, the gear pair. Okay, so now this is what I did. I entered this information, it's a 20 degree pressure angle, and I sized the profile shift for optimal specific sliding. Okay, I hit OK, and my profile shifts are in here. I size the center distance for the sum of the profile shifts. I calculate, and this is my number, I accept. I did not change the steel and I did not change the oil. Reference profile, profile A for both gear one and for gear two. Gear one, gear two, it's the same profile. Tolerances, I use the standard tolerance in this example and we could tighten up the center distance a little bit but I'm just going to leave it at this, um, this JS7. The rating, I'm going to go ahead and put my input speeds, 1850, and if I right click on here, my foot pounds is 200 foot pounds at 1850. 52, 52 kilowatts, let's see, what is that in horsepower? 70 horse. I'm not going to consider load spectra, and I'm going to do my scuffing according to the calculation, which, which is this method B. Factors. Um, I know that my shaft when I'm done with it is going to look like this 16B where I'm going to have my pinion a little bit offset off the of center, okay? So it's going to be B. <coughs> and I'm not going to do a factor K with stiffening. So my K, K sub HB, which is my face load factor, right, K sub HB. Uh, I can actually put in this information if I want and get the the uh, and define what that is off of here. So we are good at this point. So I said OK and I run my calculation and I still have my root safety, flank safety, safety against scuffing, etc. So now I save this because then my basic data is set. And what I did was I went ahead and I created a pinion shaft which is this one right here contact analysis part 2 pinion okay and the first thing I, I needed to do was I needed to create a shaft which is you can just do that by add cylinder right and then I needed to in include my cylindrical gear and the motor couplings and then my bearings. And then I put some cross sections in here. So my shaft initially I made it 200, uh, 200 millimeters long. Uh, it's a 45 millimeter diameter. I sized the bearings according to that. Uh, I toggle this one and I go ahead and I can um, 
it's a 6309 coil but I can size this and look it goes really small I know that's not going to work so then I can filter down I like a coil bearing uh, 62 6309 where is it here that's the one I had right there yep so then I says I size my brain this one I wanted to be fixed this bearing, I'm going ahead, I'm going to leave it non-locating. This one might be retained in a housing. This bearing here specifically might just be pressed on the shaft and it's allowed to float in a housing. I go ahead and I add a coupling, which I need to size this the same as my input torque, which is 200. And then for my gear, if I go ahead and delete this gear, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to position it at 74, but I want to I wanna put a gear in here. So I go to my forces, add a gear, and I'm going to read from the file. But I need to filter to find that file, so I go ahead and I grab this contact analysis part, which is the gears that we just designed, and I open it. And then I go ahead and I just position that at 74. Well, what you need to know is that this is at zero degrees, uh, alignment. This is our position of contact. So this is what we're saying is at zero. So if we have another gear that we want to place out here, this contact point for this gear is zero. Okay? Now when we add the other gear on the other shaft, that contact um, mesh position is going to be 180 degrees from that because they're straight away. So and it matters in terms of if you're taking these forces that you can pull out of the report and, and put that into some kind of a, a FEA or something. You just need to know where that reference guide is. My basic data, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to link this. It's 1850. I may, I'll put that in there. It's clockwise, and that's important as well. I'm not going to consider load spectra. I want to do the mounted by interference fit with stiffness. Okay. You could do some others, but this is the, the best that we can do here. That's like our, our most accurate. Uh, roller bearing stiffness, we want to do that from inner geometry because that will take into account our tilting stiffness as well as our radial stiffness. The, the lubricant is the same, and then I change this material to the same material as the gear because I'm going to make that all in one shaft. And that's how, I'm, that's how I want it to be considered. Temperature 32.2, 48.8. On the strength, it's a limited life application and I need 2,500 hours. I need to go in my module specific settings if I don't want to see warnings and change this also to 2,500. Okay. There isn't anything else we're going to change in here at this time. Um, we're going to use the uh, seal torque. We're not using seals, so in this case, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we're just going to use a linear shaft. We don't think it's nonlinear at this point. And we're going to leave that iterative load distribution calculator. So we say OK. Now we calculate our shaft, and the other thing too is I put three in here for my eigenfrequency, so it's my natural frequency, and it'll give me my critical frequency of the shaft. But I can see here that the, the things that I'm interested in, like my roller bearing life, 6,028 hours and 4,500 hours, um, so that it meets what I need. Uh, also. I did place cross sections in here, and I did that by just set critical cross sections, and it automatically populated my my cross sections on my shaft. I save this file, and I would open a new file, and I'm going to get the. And I already created this file, so I'm going to get the gear shaft now. And I did the same thing. I started out. I created a cylinder. I extruded it to 200 millimeters. It's 50 millimeter diameter. I placed two bearings on it. I sized them for a 50 millimeter shaft right here, and then I filtered down for the ones I wanted. One side I have fixed, and the other side I have floating. 
I added a coupling motor because I needed something to react to the torque on this gear. Now this gear, I did the same thing. I read it in from the file. If I delete the gear, like so, and I go and I want to add a gear pair, I'm going to say I want to read from the data file, and I'm going to grab this contact analysis part one. Now this is the first gear that I had, and I want the second one. So I go ahead and I click on number two, and I make this... I don't remember what that number was, but we'll just we'll put it right here. Interestingly enough, if you go ahead, you can if you right click in this window and movable forces and supports, you can move this kind of wherever you want to move it. Okay, I think I was right about in here somewhere. I think it was 134. That's what it was. Okay, and again, if you wanted to do your cross sections. You can right click, set critical cross sections, it automatically populates your critical cross sections. This is a very simple shaft, obviously there could be shafts with shoulders and reliefs and all those good things. You can see my displacement over here. I did the same thing in a basic data, inner geometry. I went ahead and here's something you need to pay attention. This gear shaft needs to be operating, if it's in mesh with another shaft that we're going to look at in contact analysis, it needs to be in counterclockwise. If the first shaft is clockwise, this one needs to be counterclockwise. If you have this set at clockwise and not counterclockwise, you will get a warning that says you don't have a gear that's working on the right flank. So double check that. Our strength, <clears throat> limited strength, 2,500 hours, case two, Again, I went in here to my roller bearings and I changed that to 2,500 hours. It doesn't make a real difference. You can not change that and leave it at 20,000. You're just going to get warnings that say your bearings don't meet the required life, even though when you do the calculation, your bearings are more than 2,500 down here. Right? So this is populated. I save it. And now I'm going to go back and open up my gear pair that I designed my 2337 gear pair and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to my calculation and I'm going to add contact analysis I'm also going to add modifications okay if I run my contact analysis as is with my own input I don't know that there's any deviation say I assume everything is um, you know perfect then um, and I'm not considering torque on one or two. I, I might get some crazy, very low transmission errors because I don't know exactly what my misalignment might be. But say I run this. I got my face load factor, my contact analysis. Everything is from the shaft calculation or from my own input. I get 2.1633. And this is my t uh, transmission error. This is my delta transmission error right here. This is the one that I'm looking at in terms of this is what I'm trying to optimize here. I want that to be as low as possible. So 2.1633. If I go to my axis alignment and I say, I want to use my shaft calculation, and I filter for my pinion, I hit OK, and my second one I filter for my uh, gear, and I hit OK. All right. Now my, I'm going to take into account partial loads from the shaft calculation and also my torsion has come from the shaft calculation and my axis alignment. So now when I run this, we have 2.1633. We run it again. Okay, look at this. Relevant shaft calculations. All right, did I grab the wrong one? Pinion and gear. Let's see. All right, I see what I did. We got to go back to the gear shaft. We're going to save this for now. But on this gear, we need to make sure, and I even mentioned this earlier, but this position needs to be 180. And at 180, 
the uh... so we're back here interrupted with a phone call but that's all right so we we've adjusted our 180 degrees here we we set our gear at the right uh, depth on here we've we put our cross sections in on this uh, on this shaft and if we go ahead and just we can right click set critical sections it does it automatically for us and then we run our calculation and again back in this basic data here we want to make sure this is set correctly and it's counterclockwise the same as it was in the um, the gear program. We save this and now we can go to our gear program and we can run this and then calculates we have a consistency we go to contact analysis our axis alignment we already specified our shafts and now we're going to run this again and and we're we're getting a nice calculation and we'll see what our transmission error is now with our shaft deflections. And our transmission error went up a little bit. We went from 2.16 to 2.41, but we can make it better, I think. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to go to modifications and I'm I'm not going to do anything here just yet, um, but I wanted to make sure that was on. So if I save this, this file, um, and you can, what I wanted to show basically was the difference between the transmission error between our own input two point one six. And if we use shaft calculation, which is going to end up being that 2.4, what we had. So the next thing we would do at, at this point in our contact analysis is we are going to work on getting that transmission error down as low as possible. And in order to do that, we're going to have to step into the shaft modules and start looking at our uh, trace mod modifications. So that's it for this part of it. I just wanted to show you how to set those files up and bring them in and do your contact analysis. On the next round, we'll, we'll actually look at optimizing the tooth flank uh, to get our transmission errors as low as possible. Thanks for listening. If you have any feedback, please don't hesitate to call or ask. Uh, this is Ty Warner with KISSSoft USA. Thanks for uh, watching.